everyone, I'm Celine from Blue Cala Patterns and welcome to the final video for the Begonia Drawstring Backpack. Um, we're going to start in uh, this video by assembling our lining and the first thing we need to do is to box our cor uh, cut out our corners so that we can box them later. Same thing as we did for the exterior. I'm going to cheat this time and I'm going to put my uh, two lining panels together and I'm going to cut them both at once. So we're cutting them exactly the same size as we did the exterior. So one and a half inches by one and a half inches. Oh, come on. There we go. Okay. And we're going to sew these together the same way that we did the exterior. So we're going to start by doing the, the bottom edge here in between the corners. Just going to pin those right side together and then sew them with our typical 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. And then I'm going to press that seam open and top stitch along both sides. Now this time, because I'm using fabric, I can actually go ahead and press the seam allowance open before I top stitch it. Okay, so I'm just going to take that over to the machine and I'll top stitch with 1 8 of an inch seam allowance along both sides of the seam. Okay, once the bottom seam is finished, we're going to do the same thing as we did for the exterior. And we're going to pin these together. This time we don't have to worry about any seams to line up here. I'm just going to match these up and sew together. So. The one side you're going to sew completely from top to bottom and you're going to backstitch at the top and the bottom. But on the second side we're not going to sew the whole way because we need to leave an opening to turn the bag. Okay, so we're going to, for the second side, you're going to start at the top, backstitch, and then you're going to sew down about three or four inches and then backstitch. Then you're going to leave an opening. And you're just going to sew, start start here by backstitching, sew all the way down to the bottom and backstitch again. So you leave an opening that's about four inches and that should be fine for turning the bag. Okay, so um, I used a contrasting thread so that you can see uh, where I've sewn. So this is one solid line. And then here I left that opening uh, that I mentioned for turning the bag. So now we're just going to box our corners and we're actually using exactly the same method as we did for the exterior. I like to open up the side seam here and match up that seam and just put a clip. And then you're doing the same thing. You're just sewing across here, making sure to backstitch at the beginning and the end and doing the same thing for this corner. If you want to sew two lines of stitching, you can go ahead and do that. I usually don't for the lining. Okay, so I'm going to go and sew the box corners and then I'll be able to assemble the two shells together. Okay, so the box corners are sewn up. I'm just going to trim my seam allowance a bit. Okay, and then I'm going to take my exterior and I'm just going to insert the exterior into the lining right sides together and then we're going to clip the top edges together
And when I do that, the casings should be facing down towards the bottom of the bag. And I start by lining up the side seams. And I open up this side seam like so. Oh, I've sewn these together. That's fine. Okay, so I start by clipping the side seams. And then I'll clip everything else in between. Okay, and then I'll, I'll go ahead and finish clipping everything in between and then I'm just going to go over to my machine and I'll sew all the way around with my regular 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so the top edges are sewn together. Now I'm going to use that opening I left in the lining and turn the bag right side out. very easy to turn this bag, of course, because it's not very structured. Okay, and then tuck the lining inside the bag. You can, if you want, you can press the, uh, the opening. I want to change my thread because I used a uh, contrasting thread when I was sewing everything. So I'm not going to sew this up just yet because I want to switch to an ivory thread. But uh, you would just press it like so. And then when I sew it up, I try to sew as close as I can get to the edge, but making sure that I capture all of the layers and close that opening. So I'm just going to stick this inside the bag. And then again, if you want to press you, the opening of the bag before you top stitch, you can do that. Okay, tuck it all the way in. Okay, so now if you want, you can go ahead and press this, making sure that your drawstring casing has to stick up towards the uh, opening of the bag, okay? So when you're top stitching, it has to be facing up like this this thread okay so I'm gonna finish pressing the top edge and then I'll do the top stitching okay so the top edge of the bag is uh, top stitched and the bag is pretty much ready all we have left to do is to sew up our shoulder strap so I'm gonna set this aside for now and I'm gonna grab all of my strap pieces so I did decide to interface my strap pieces um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, to join some pieces together so that I can make the length that I need. Um, the length that I mentioned in the pattern is pretty much the right length for me. Uh, but as I mentioned, you're going to want to double check that that length works for you. If you want to cut a piece of string and thread the bag with the string and try it on to see if that works for you. So what I'm going to do is just join some uh, strap pieces and then cut the length that I need. Um, I didn't interface all the way to the end so that it's not as bulky in the seams. Uh, normally what I would do is I would uh, join the the strap pieces on an angle if I was using vinyl or cork just because it makes it less bulky. Uh, with a fabric strap I'm a little bit less concerned about that so I'm just going to sew them together with straight seams but normally I would do them this way. Same as you join pieces of binding, you would do it this way, and then you would sew diagonal, a diagonal line, and then when you turn it, it ends up working out like this. So you can use whatever method you, you, you wish to use. Okay, so I'm gonna go and join these pieces together and these two pieces together and then trim them to the right length. Okay, so I have my two strap pieces ready and cut to the length that I need. Um, I'm going to show you uh, just um, very quickly how to press these. It's the same as any other strap. I'm not gonna do the whole thing with my tiny iron because that will take an absolute eternity. Um, so you just start by pressing in the shorter ends like this towards the wrong side. I'm gonna do the same for the other one. 
I pressed them like about a half an inch, I guess. Okay, and then you will fold the strap in half, wrong sides together, and press it. And you do that along the entire length of the strap. Then you open it up and you fold in each half towards that center crease and you press again. So I'm just showing you a small portion but you're going to do this along the entire length. And then once that is pressed you're just folding it in half again and then you can press it again or um, just use clips to hold it and then go over to your machine and sew it. So you can either just sew across the short end, rotate and sew along the open end to sew it shut or you can sew all the way around. Um, you might want to use a slightly smaller seam allowance than 1 8 of an inch. 1 8 of an inch might be a little bit too uh, big of a seam allowance for such a narrow strap. So I'm going to do a little bit less than 1 8 all the way around. Okay, so I finished sewing one of my drawstrings. Um, I'm going to show you how to thread one of them and then you have to repeat the same thing for the second drawstring but you're doing it opposite. So you'll need to attach a safety pin to one end of the string and then you pass it through the end of one of your casings. Now, if you have a bigger safety pin, it's going to work a lot better than my tiny little one. So if you have access to a bigger one, I'm going to highly recommend that you do that. Okay, so I'm going to not make you watch this. So what I'm going to do is thread all the way through here. When it comes out through here, it goes straight into the opening here of the second one and all the way through again here. Okay, so I have the drawstring go going through both of the casings. So it went in this way into this one. And then as soon as it came out of this one, it went inside this one all the way out like this. Okay, now you have two options. Um, you can pass both of these through your drawstring connector or just one of them. I'm just putting one of them through the drawstring connector like this. And then I'll take off the safety pin. And then I'm just going to knot these together at the bottom. So I just do a double knot like this. Okay. Okay, and now you're going to do the same thing for the second strap, but you're doing the opposite. So you're gonna start threading at this end, all the way out into this one. And I would recommend putting it on the inside of this one, if you can. And then once you have them both, then you're going to be able to cinch the bag. So you see, if you were to interface this, you would probably find it pretty difficult to cinch. Now, if you're not into making straps, um, you can actually use any type of cording as long as it's not too thick. I would probably stick with uh, one quarter inch cording and then you can just cut the lengths that you need and uh, thread these through the casing and then you can save yourself a lot of time by not having to make any sort of straps. So I'm going to finish my second strap and thread it in and, and I'll show you what the finished bag looks like. Okay, so the both drawstrings are finished and um, I've threaded them both through the casing. Um, if I had to do it again, um, this, this fabric here is like a linen and it has a texture and it's a little bit thicker. So I really should not have interfaced it because it's too tight inside the casing. And I don't want my casing to be very big because then it won't look as nice. I would probably have not interfaced this uh, strap had I known. Um, but the the other bags that I made, <clears throat> I actually used packaged uh, binding strips for one. 
bag and the other one just regular quilt weight cotton and they definitely were much easier to cinch um, so when you're cinching the bag you're just pulling on these and then to uncinch the bag it's better if you just pull on the sides like this and then it will it will open uh, thanks for joining I hope that you enjoyed the pattern and the sew along and I can't wait to see everybody's bags <laughs>